In the past few years, 3DS owners only had two possible paths to take if they wanted to stream and capture content from the 3DS system. One way they could do so is by installing a capture board in the 3DS system. And while that is most certainly a great solution for capturing video, a capture card can be a bit pricey to get a hold of, especially if you're not comfortable with doing the install yourself. It can also be a no-go situation for many, for example, if you own a older model 3DS system. Most capture boards are not being made at this time for many of the older models. That aside, the other option 3DS owners had to capture and stream content is by using the Snickerstream application in conjunction with the NTR Custom Firmware Selector app on the 3DS with Homebrew, which in turn is a solution only viable for new 3DS models as well. And even then, it has issues with poor frame rate, especially when you have a lot of action going on in a particular game. But don't you worry, because here in 2024, the situation has changed as a brand new third option has appeared on the scene, and honestly, for many, this might be the very best option for streaming and capturing 3DS content. The developer by the name of Pablo MK7 has recently released a new app called the Arctic Base Server, and what it does is it allows you to stream your 3DS games, content, and saves from your system to a compatible emulator program like Citra, for example, and it allows you to play your 3DS games on your computer. You can then use it to output to another screen, record gameplay in a program like OBS or so, or even stream your game to Twitch. This allows you to play your games at a higher resolution too, with improved visual quality, as well as be able to play these games with a controller of your choice, and of course, with improved frame rate over the previous wireless stream solution with Snickerstream that I talked about earlier. Now, I've been putting this new method through its paces over the last few days, and simply put, I've been very impressed with the results so far. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to get this set up and going, so I'll share my thoughts on the whole thing, and also talk about any issues with it that you will need to be aware of. So without any further ado, let's dive right into how to actually get this set up and running. Now first things first, if it isn't already obvious, you will need a 3DS running custom firmware, specifically the latest version of Luma 3DS or version 13.1.1 or newer. If you need to update Luma, you can always do so by grabbing the latest version from the Universal Updater on your homebrewed 3DS. If you need to install Luma for the first time on your system, well I got you covered with links to an excellent guide site, 3ds.hacks.guide. There are video guides out there, but I do highly recommend using that website. It's always up to date with the latest methods and information on how to install custom firmware on your 3DS. The second and third things that you'll need is the 3DS emulator Citra on your computer, and of course the file to install the Arctic Base server app. Now I got all the links to those down below. The Citra link that I have from Pablo MK7's GitHub page is pretty cool, as all you need to do is download the Windows Citra zip file, and then just extract the folder, and then run the app from there. You don't need to install anything, but more on that in a bit here. On the Arctic Base Server GitHub page, head to the Release section, and what you'll need is the arcticbase.cia file, so go ahead and download the latest release from that website that I have linked down below. From there, you just need to move the file over to your SD card, and you can do so by inserting the SD card from your 3DS into your computer, and then just dragging and dropping the file over. You can also use FTP if you got that set up on your 3DS. I do recommend placing the CIA file into the CIA's folder, since it just makes sense for easy navigation purposes. Next, you'll need to head to the FBI app on your homebrewed 3DS and open it. By the way, if you already got Luma set up and followed that guide that I linked, then you already have that app on your 3DS. Once you get FBI open, in the menu on the bottom screen, highlight SD and click on that, and then navigate to the CIA's folder and click on the arcticbase.cia file, and then select install and delete CIA. This will install the app on your 3DS, as well as delete the CIA file, as we won't need it anymore. 
Once it's installed, head back to your home screen on your 3DS and you'll get a notification that there's a new app that has been installed. So go ahead and unwrap that to unveil the Arctic Base app. Go ahead and click on that app to start things rolling. Once opened, on the bottom screen, you'll see two options. Press A to launch Arctic Base or press B or start to exit the app. Obviously, what you want to do is press A, so go ahead and do that to start up Arctic Base. And after you press it, it'll kick you back to the 3DS home menu. Now, if you get an error here that you need to run the latest version of Luma, then that's exactly what you need to do. So go ahead and close the app and go to Universal Updater and download the latest version of Luma to update it. After it's done installing the update, make sure to reboot your 3DS, and then go ahead and open the Arctic Base app and click A to start it, and it'll kick you back to the 3DS home menu. From here, what you'll want to do is select the 3DS game that you want to play. Now I do want to stress some things here before we go any further. First being that the Arctic Base app is in active development, and at this time, it can be only used with 3DS games and software only, whether it be through actual game cuts that you insert into your 3DS, or through software that's installed on your system. It can't be used with DS games of any sort, as well as with any homebrew applications at this time. Also, virtual console games on the system might run, but more often than not, I've run into issues while playing them, such as Super NES games running and operating with an incredibly reduced frame rate, or Game Boy games, which are running fine from a playability standpoint, but with a ton of audio issues. Now things could change with updates, and I'll try to pass any info along if that does change. Anyway, with that said, once you clicked on the game that you want to play, you'll see the game start up, and then you'll be back at the Arctic Base menu screen. From here, what you want to do is then go and launch the Citra app on your computer. And then once you got Citra launched, what you want to do is then go to the top menu bar, and then click on File, and then in the drop-down menu, click on Connect to Arctic Base. You'll then see a pop-up asking for your Arctic Base server address. Now what you want to do is look at your 3DS's top screen. You'll see some words saying server, listening on, and then a set of numbers. What that is, is your 3DS's server address. What you want to do is then type that number into the pop-up on Citra. Now note that this number will be different for every 3DS, but once you enter that number, it'll save in Citra, so you won't need to type this again in the future, unless of course you change it, or use a different 3DS. Once you enter that number into the pop-up, go ahead and click OK, and then the 3DS will start to communicate with the Citra app, and start to send information to it. If you look at the 3DS's bottom screen, you see the word traffic and the number of kilobytes being sent. When you launch the game, it can take a bit for the game to start on Citra, so don't worry if you're staring at a black screen for what seems to be quite a bit. It's just the nature of the setup here. Once the game is loaded, we can do a few things. On the 3DS, you can actually press the A button to enter sleep mode to turn off the screens and conserve power. That's a good thing, and pressing any button on the 3DS will wake it up from sleep mode. Next, what you want to do is connect a controller if you haven't already done so. If you need to configure controls, which you probably will need to do if you haven't used Citra before, then what you need to do is click on Emulation in the top bar menu of Citra, and then select Configure in the drop-down menu. In the new window that pops up, select Controls on the left side menu, and then you can assign the buttons to whatever you want. If you want to go full screen on your monitor, you can do so by selecting View in the top menu bar, and then select Full Screen. Additionally, you can just press the F11 key to do the same thing. You can also adjust the layout of the 3DS screens in Citra by clicking on View in the top menu bar, and then selecting Screen Layout. That menu gives you a lot of options to play with, as well as the option to separate the windows if you need to. So feel free to experiment to get the view layout that you want. From here, the sky's the limit. 
you can play your 3DS games like this on your computer monitor or insert it as a source in something like OBS to capture recordings or even stream it. If your computer supports HDMI out, you can connect it to a TV screen and play it like that. Imagine playing 3DS on a 50 inch screen. Well guess what? You can do that now. Whenever you want to end your gaming session, you can do so by just simply pressing the start button on your 3DS and or end communication between the 3DS and Citra on your computer. If you want to stream another game, it's easy to do so. All you need to do is click on the Arctic Base Server app on your 3DS again, and then press A once it's open to activate it, and then select a game you want to play after it sends you back to your 3DS home menu. Then on the Citra app, click on the Connect to Arctic Base Server like I talked about before. You'll be connected and free to play your game. It's easy peasy. Now for another additional tip, if you want to change or adjust the graphics, that too is pretty easy to do. The default settings for Citra are fine, but if you want to adjust the way your game looks, you can do so by clicking on Emulation in the top menu bar on Citra and clicking on Configure in the drop down menu. From there you can click on graphics on the left side of the menu that pops up and you can adjust the settings from here. Just note that if you increase these settings, it can have an impact on the performance of the app, so just keep that in mind. Finally, let's talk about saves and game data, because this is something that I do want to be very clear about here. All the game data is kept on your 3DS. If we go to save a game while playing in this setup, it will save your game right to your 3DS system. No saves are saved on your computer whatsoever, and no games or ROMs are saved on your computer as well. All the game data remains on your 3DS, and all this process is doing is streaming that to your computer. Because of that, this process is completely 100% legal in case you might be worried about the legalities of the whole thing. But anyway, now that you know how to set this all up, let's talk about it. What are my thoughts about the whole thing, and what are the issues that I've encountered so far with using this setup? First and foremost, I've found this new way to stream and capture content through Arctic Base, the whole thing, just simply amazing. This, in all honesty, is a huge improvement over using something like Snickerstream. Those who have used Snickerstream before know what I mean. While it was serviceable, it did come with some issues. Mainly the frame rate it was quite low at times, and it could only be used on new 3DS models only. But this method, holy cow, this is so much better. It can use any 3DS running Luma to do this. Yes, any system from the first model to the last. Here you get better visuals of the games, plus you get to use any controller you wish. I love the 3DS, it has a great library, but I've always said my biggest problem with the 3DS systems was I could never get fully comfortable using controls on those handhelds, and now that's no longer a problem. You can use a full-size controller. Hell, I could even use the Switch controller. Best of all, all my saves are intact. Anytime I save a game while using Arctic Base Server and Citra, it saves on my 3DS, so if I want to, I can pick up where I left off and go play on my actual handheld. In addition, you don't need to use any extra cables to try to capture the 3DS sound, which for the other two methods previously, you would most certainly need an aux cable connected in order to do so. With the Arctic Base Server, all the sound data gets sent to the Citra app, and it comes out from there. It's just fantastic. That all said, it isn't a 100% flawless experience. Like I said earlier in the video, the new method is relatively new, and everything is in active development, and there are some things that will need to be worked on and improved. As I said before, at the moment, it can be only used with 3DS games, and because of how it works, it cannot capture the home screen menu, nor can it be used with DS or DSi games. It can't be used to stream any homebrew software or games at this time either. On top of that, there's the issues with the Virtual Console games. Also, if you want to use the 3DS as a controller, you just can't do that yet, at least not at this time. What you'll also quickly notice, and this is a bit on the Citra emulator side of things, is that sometimes games take a lot longer to load than what you would normally experience on a 3DS. This is especially apparent when starting up a game for the first time. At times during gameplay, you might experience some frame rate hitches. More often than not, the gameplay is fine at 60 FPS, but just sometimes the game might hitch at a loading spot or when there is a lot of loading occurring. 
Also, some games playing through this method aren't a great experience. Citra doesn't have 100% compatibility with all 3DS games, and some games just run poor, or in some cases, not at all. For example, Kirby Planet Robobot runs pretty poorly through Citra, so it has a lot of frame rate issues. When I attempted to do the Arctic based server setup with Super Smash Bros. for 3DS, the game would just never load. In a lot of cases though, the experience was generally good to even being an excellent experience. Mario Kart 7 is a blast playing through this method, and for Animal Crossing New Leaf, it was practically a flawless experience. While I'm on the subject about New Leaf, just want to point this out too, that you can use a mouse to operate the bottom screen while using the Citra app. That alone could be a game changer for some games like New Leaf that require a lot of use of the stylus, so keep that in mind. Those issues aside though, I freaking love this. This is my new favorite way to play my 3DS games. I can comfortably play my games on the big screen with a controller of my choosing, as well as stream and capture footage in a relatively good quality, which is something I couldn't do before. This also might mean I might do more 3DS stuff on the channel in the future, so uh, let me know if you'd like to see that. But anyway, that is it for today. I encourage you to check this out. Again, I think it is really awesome, and it's pretty easy to set up. I'm excited for what the future updates for it might include. As always, thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next video.